One of the most difficult design challenges is representing a lot of data clearly. It's easy to throw a bunch of numbers and dates on a page, but to make them readable, you typically need to format it all as a table. Well, InDesign offers a number of features that makes table making, well, it's not fun, but at least it's pretty tolerable and sometimes even interesting. Now, the first thing you need to know about tables in InDesign is that they are always anchored inside a text frame, and they flow along with the text in a story. There's no way to get a table outside of a text frame. So let's go ahead and make a text frame with a type tool. I'll just draw one out here, and let's put a table in it. To get my table, I go to the Table menu and choose Insert Table, or I press Command Option Shift T, that's a mouthful, or Control Alt Shift T on Windows. The Insert Table dialog box lets me specify how many rows and columns I want. I'll talk about headers and footers and table styles in later movies, but for right now, I'm just going to stick with the default values of four rows, four columns, click OK, and there's my table. I'll zoom into 200% by pressing Command-2 or Control-2 on Windows. Scroll over here so we can see the table better. These little number signs in here are only visible when you have invisible characters turned on. And that's something that you can choose to turn on and off from the type menu. Way down here at the bottom, hide or show invisible characters. I'll hide those for right now so we can just see the table. Putting data into my table is as simple as typing. I'll just type some random text here. I hit Tab to jump to the next cell. Tab, tab, tab. You like this text? It's, it's a very interesting text, isn't it? Uh, go to the previous cell, I can press Shift Tab. Shift Tab goes to the previous cell, and Tab goes to the next cell. I can also use the arrow keys. Down arrow goes to the next cell down, left arrow goes to the next cell to the left, and so on. Each one of these cells is almost like its own little text frame, and so I can simply type as much text as I want in here. I can hit return, I can type as much as I want, and you'll see that the row actually expands to fit all the text that I put into that cell. Another thing that's interesting about tables is I wanted to convert this table into straight text again. I simply select inside of a cell and from the table menu choose convert table to text. It asks me what do I want to place between each column? What do I want to place between each row? I click OK and suddenly I have text again and there's a tab between each one of these. I can see that tab again by turning on show hidden characters. There we go. There's the little symbol for a tab character. And here's a symbol for the end of paragraph return. So this is all interesting, but most tables do not originate in InDesign. That is, people don't build their own table and then start typing in it. Most tables come from Word or Excel or someone sends you a bunch of data. How do you deal with those situations? Well, let me zoom out to fit in window again with Command-0 or Control-0 on Windows. And I'm going to uh, hit Escape key to switch the selection tool. And then I'll hit Delete to simply delete that. And we're going to start all over with some brand new text. And the text that we're going to work with is from a text file. So I choose File, Place. And for my exercise files, I'm going to choose tdata.txt. This is the text data. I'm not going to be working with the Excel file quite yet. Now I'm going to click Open and it loads the place cursor, and I'll simply click on my page. There's all the data that comes in from the text file, and you can see there's little tabs going from one column to the next, and uh, it looks very much like the kind of data that we would typically get in an email or from an Excel file or something like that. Now I can convert this text into a table simply by selecting it. I double click to place the type tool in there. I'll press Command A or Control A on Windows to select all the text, and then I go to the table menu, and I choose Convert Text to Table. It'll ask me what's between each column and what's between each row. This is tab delimited text, so I'll just leave it at the defaults and I'll click OK. And there's my table. Now here's something. The table was so long that it actually went past the edge of the boundary of the frame and therefore I have overset text. What do I want to do about that? Well, I'm going to hit Escape to switch to the selection tool and I'm going to load this uh, overset text by clicking on the out port here. I'll zoom over here, uh, or scroll over here, and then I'll click over on this page, and there's the rest of the table. So you can see that tables can go more than one page. They can span as many pages as you want, really, but they always thread from one text frame into another. Even more cool, we can see that if I change the height of this text frame by making it shorter, the table reflows this text frame. Speaking of changing the size of my text frame, I can also change the width of my text frame and a kind of wacky thing happens. The table sticks outside of the frame. This is just one of those weird things about tables that you have to know about. 
Labels can go past the left or right edge of a text frame, but it can't go above the top or bottom of a text frame. Now again, if I wanted to edit some text in here, I simply use the type tool, I'll double click to get the type tool, and I will select the text in here and I'll change it to something else. It's as easy as that. These are just cells, again, just like little tiny text frames. Now I know this table isn't exactly pretty, but at least we have a table to work with. In the next few movies, I'll explain how to adjust the rows and columns, and then I'll start formatting the cells. Tables don't just spring to life by themselves. You need to feed them, care for them, adjust their rows and columns. In the last movie, we talked about how to create a table, and since I'm going to be manipulating that table in this movie, I'd better go ahead and create a new one. File, place, I'll grab that same text file as I did in the last movie, and I'll click here, and I'll select all of this, just like I did in the last movie, convert this to a table, click OK, and now we've got our table to mess with. Now what I'd like to do is adjust the width and the height of each of these columns and rows. For example, this first column is just not wide enough. Let me zoom in to 100% here, Command 1 or Control 1 on Windows to go to 100% mode, and now I can see that this text is not fitting. So what I'd like to do is make this column wider. And one way to do that is simply by hovering the cursor over the column boundary and dragging. Now it's wider, but there's a problem with doing this. Let me scroll over to the side here, with options, spacebar, alt spacebar. You can see that when you do that, it actually extends all of the columns over, and now the edge of the table is outside of the frame. Well, that doesn't look right, so let me undo that with Command-Z or Control-Z on Windows and show you a little trick. Instead of dragging that column boundary, I'm going to hold down the Shift key while I drag. And that simply moves that one boundary, and it leaves all the other ones alone. Now this column got too squished, so I better shift drag this one over a little bit. And now it's looking pretty good. So when you hold on the shift key, it adjusts just that one boundary. Same thing with adjusting the height of these rows. I could simply drag down, but it moves all of the rows down. I'll undo that. And instead, I'm going to shift drag and Oh, it says that I can't do it. It didn't, nothing moved because this row here is already the smallest it could be. So in that case, it's not going to work. Why don't I go ahead and drag, and then I'll drag this down. That's good. Now you'll see the effect. Shift, drag between these, simply adjust that one line, and it doesn't adjust the rest of the table. Now this is nice, it's very interactive, it's very easy, but sometimes you want to be a little bit more precise, and you can adjust the height and the width of your rows more precisely with the table panel. So let me click on the table panel way over here in the dock here, and I can see that this gives me all kinds of information about the table, but I'm just going to focus on this middle part. This is the row height, and this is the column width. And now the row height is typically set at least some value at least some value, okay? But you, I can change this to exactly. If I know how tall I want the row to be, I could change it to exactly. For example, I might change this to uh, maybe 15 millimeters. And now I know that that row is exactly 15 millimeters tall. Now the thing about changing it to exactly is if I go ahead and start typing in here, you'll see something happen. I type too much to fit into that. When it's set to exactly, it will no longer auto-expand. And you see this little red dot there? That's kind of like an overset mark for a table. And the only thing I could do to get rid of that is edit the text. I could take out some of that text if I want to. Or I could switch this back to at least. Now it will auto-expand to fit all of that text. The column width value over here is currently set to this, this value that I, I had dragged it over to. But if I want it to be exactly, for example, one inch, I could simply type one in, hit enter, and now I know that that column is exactly one inch wide. Unfortunately, when I was dragging these, I didn't get all of three of these columns exactly the same width. So I'm going to adjust the, the width of all three of them. And the first thing I do is I drag over all three of those. Did you see how I did that? I simply start off in one column and drag until I'm going over multiple columns. And you can see that it actually selected the entire cells. So I've selected those three cells, which is, in this case, going to be the same as selecting all three columns. And I can change the value here in the, uh, the table panel. It's blank because there are three different uh, values there. I could change it here, but instead I'm going to go up to the table menu and I'm going to choose distribute columns evenly. And you'll see what happens when I choose that. All three columns are now exactly the same width. 
as I've been manipulating these rows and columns, I seem to have pushed the edge of the table past the edge of the, uh, the text frame again. So I'm going to adjust that. Now dragging the edge of the frame actually acts a little bit different than dragging one of these column boundaries. If I simply drag the edge of the frame and let go, I, I move just the, the last column. I've extended just the last column. So let me undo that. I'll just press Command Z or Control Z on Windows to go back to where I was. Now I'm going to squinch this in a little bit, but instead I'm going to hold on the Shift key. The Shift key on an edge boundary, on the right edge boundary, or the bottom edge boundary of a table, does something different than it does in the middle of the table. If I hold on the Shift key here, it actually moves all of the cells in. It actually will change the, the width of all of these cells to be uh, proportional. So if I drag it in, you can see what's happening there. They all get squinched in, or they all get squished out. That's with the Shift key held down, and only on the right edge of a table or the bottom edge of a table. So you can see that managing all these rows and columns isn't difficult, but you do have to pay attention if you want a high quality result. Now in the next movie, we'll look at how to add or remove rows and columns, or even merge some of these cells together.